So, um, hello everyone, uh, my name is Sevan Janyan. I'm going to talk about um, some of the things I've been working on over the last year with um, various open source projects, um, predominantly package source uh, from NetBSD. Uh, well, um, so, to start off with, I started working on a project called uh, Kuva Chili, which is a captive portal um, software for use on wireless networks. Um, what that is is typically when you go to a cafe or uh, a Starbucks and you connect to their public Wi-Fi, um, you're usually presented with a, some form of a web page which you authenticate and then you're granted internet access. Uh, Kuva Chili um, allows you to do that. Um, so I originally ported this to FreeBSD um, many years ago, but um, I left it uh, to grow stagnant. And um, as FreeBSD moved to uh, Clang in FreeBSD 10, um, the package was broken. So I set out to um, fix the situation. Um, and it wasn't actually any uh, restriction, well actually there was only one restriction imposed by Clang itself. Everything else was basically bad um, uh, coding habits within the code base which Clang kind of raised uh, to clean up. Um, the restriction that uh, Clang imposed was that uh, Clang doesn't support um, nested functions. So I had to break functions out, and uh, so everything would be called out logically rather than having one ginormous function with functions within itself, um, which would get called. Um, everything else after that was basically um, defining the parameters for the function calls rather than just having a, um, an empty parameter list. Um, and through that, um, uh, got things going. Um, after that, it was basically using um, deprecated uh, functionality for setting up the network interfaces, which FreeBSD finally uh, ripped out in version 10 that had been marked uh, deprecated back in sometime in 2000, 2001. Um, uh, but actually, this is a good thing because the original method was it would take three or four calls to actually set up an interface, whereas the new method, um, it's a single call with a struct and your interface is up and going. Um, the problem is is that uh, the code base is also uh, wasn't really uh, written in a, with portability in mind, so there's lots of horrible if-defs all over the place. Um, and I'm sad to say I had to contribute to this a little bit in that uh, for Linux, everything is still in the old method, but if you're uh, FreeBSD, OpenBSD, or Mac OS, you use the new improved method, and um, off we go. Um, so after that, I kind of started looking into the um, source code. Uh, so projects like Coverity and also uh, Clang offer a static code analyzer. Um, and running that against the code base raises um, lots of issues. Um, and also within it, uh, rather than using the methods that uh, the operating system provides, the developer opted to kind of create his own methods instead. So uh, one of the examples is these uh, functions that are prefixed with safe, which I don't know if they are safe at all, but Instead of having something like uh, strl copy, which is found on uh, the BSDs and Mac OS, he decided to uh, create his own version, which is just a wrapper around the insecure uh, string copy function. Um, so uh, this was a bit more painful. So I'm not actually originally a programmer, but um, the code base is heavily um, oriented around uh, using Oto tools and libtool. Um, so what I wanted to do was basically um, rip these uh, save functions out, um, replace them with what's there in our libc, and then get um, 
the header files uh, for imported on platforms that wouldn't have this uh, in place. So if you're building on Linux, which doesn't have this strl copy, the necessary header file would be pulled in. So traditionally, if you weren't using the auto tools and stuff like that, you would have your file in some common location, and in your source code, you would put pound include um, and the header file to import. Um, and I thought this would be the method that you would do for auto tools, but actually, you do not want to do anything like that, and you focus purely on auto tools and um, have tests written in auto tools. Um, so when you're actually building it, auto tools would probe your operating system, um, and if it doesn't find the necessary components, it itself would uh, pull the um, uh, necessary components in. Um, so I lost a, quite a bit of time um, due to this, but uh, thanks to uh, Darren Chandler from the OpenBSD project, he kind of prodded me in the right direction to um, doing things within Automake. And it's literally, um, I should actually have this up on the thing, it was literally a three-line uh, check for doing the test. Um, so after that, um, So the, these changes are still waiting to go in. There's a pull request on GitHub, and there's more to come um, for this. Um, and after I moved on to um, dealing with uh, package source. So on package source, uh, I started off trying to uh, build uh, package source um, on old Mac OS, um, specifically Mac OS Tiger um, on PowerPC. And uh, this old hardware is kind of very slow and um, not very powerful. And I had an old laptop, which I was trying to do these builds on. And um, trying to build things like GCC and stuff like that was taking a considerable amount of time and putting this uh, laptop that I had under uh, lots of pressure. Um, so I was given a. Uh, Mac Mini to uh, kind of dedicate to the task and free this poor laptop from uh, tortures of you know building GCC, which would take 48 hours. Um, you know if you wanted GCC uh, Java support and things like this. Um, and British summertime, even though this is a fairly small um, box, it actually still puts out quite a bit of heat um, trying to get um, things compiling. Uh, so I got on social media and asked around, and I ended up um, landing a machine in MIT, um, which sits there, and I can just run builds, and it doesn't matter. And so this, what, you, uh, what is up here, is the result of the first build of the entire tree um, on this machine at MIT. And at the time, there was. 15,000 possible packages that could be built on uh, OSX Tiger. There was 8,500 built successfully. And then these were the key packages that caused the most breakages. Um, so for Mesalib, uh, the reason that wouldn't build was because the tool chain that um, Apple provided um, wasn't able to generate the shared libraries um, that Mesalib uh, wanted to generate. So originally I thought um, most of that stuff is open source, so I'll try and um, update the components myself and wrap, bundle that up as a separate package which people could um, use on an old version of Mac OS. The problem was, was that though the, the source code for the, what they call the CC tools is available, um, when uh, the Hackintosh scene um, came about, when Apple decided to move to Intel Macs, um, Apple withdrew most of the build documentation and uh, components um, for building the operating system yourself. Um, so you're pretty much, though you have the source code for some of these components, you don't actually know how to build it because um, all the documentation has been pulled. Uh, so I kind of cheated um, and built 
uh, a static version of Mesolib to kind of get around the issue of not being able to generate shared libraries with the, the tool chain that uh, Apple had provided. Um, for CMake, uh, CMake was an issue where um, the build had been, uh, the build that the project provides, uh, sorry, the build files uh, that the project provides for building on Mac OS assumes that you're going to be building in a set location and any um, other path uh, it cannot handle. So what would happen would uh, you would build in uh, CMake from package source. Uh, package source needs um, OpenSSL, Zlib, um, and some of these common uh, core components. Um, so that would be passed to the build system, and the build system would start building, and then it would get to the linking stage, and it would go, oh, I know, all of the components that I need are in the location that Apple provides in slash developer. Um, and that would blow up because it would be pulling in headers from a modern version of components and trying to link to 15-year-old version of components in another location. And that was quite painful. Um, for the various versions of Ruby, um, I'll come back to. Um, for the Qt, um, that was not really solved. Qt is a really big code base, and even yeah, I mean even the smallest um, problem, the diffs are quite big and. Because it takes such a long time, I kind of didn't pursue uh, trying to fix this. Um, things that aren't here was um, I, the version of GCC that was on Mac OS Tiger was version 4.4. .4, so I wanted to bring in new versions of GCC uh, so p people would have a modern compiler. Um, for most of that, really, uh, it would build, but the problems were in package source where um, like when you're passing parameters to your linker, uh, the version of the linker in Mac OS cannot handle having spaces in the paths that are passed in, whereas modern linkers uh, can. So obviously this wasn't, hadn't been backported to older versions. So r really for, to get things going, I just had to remove a space from a path and uh, things would just build. Um, so Ruby, uh, turns out that Ruby has a very, very decent um, set of documentation for their API. However, for the build documentation, it is absolutely non-existent. So when you go on and ask people, um, how do I build Ruby? Uh, it's quite a common response to be actually pointed to a package manager for your operating system and say, told, go and, you know, use brew or you know uh, rpm or yum or something like this which doesn't really help you if you're trying to build it yourself um, and literally the problem was was that um, the database module in ruby uh, was unable to cope with berkeley db in mac os because on mac os the files are split into uh, two separate files whereas uh, Ruby expects it to be one, and um, that was it. It was a ba there was one comment in the source code buried somewhere in the database module, and I lost a lot of time for that, and it's <laughs> very annoying. Um, so um, by the new year, I'd uh, managed to actually. Uh, exceed the number of packages available in package source from the Intel uh, Intel binaries. Um, so after that, I kind of started looking around at you know, new platforms to uh, play around with on package source. And uh, every geek kind of has a soft spot for BOS, right? So uh, <laughs> uh, Haiku is still going. So I thought I kind of ah, um, I kind of play around with that, but um, uh, with Haiku, um, 
that was really painful and I didn't actually uh, get very far because I'm not sure if this is still if this is applicable to BOS but with Haiku there is no notion of multi-user system it's a single user system um, and you're automatically what is you know the super user um, and for their file system there is no file system as such um, you have packages which contain snippets of a uh, file system and there's a daemon that starts up when the computer when the system boots and this daemon takes your packages and union mounts all the packages that you have to form a, 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 a what appears to be a user land and then you have a, a piece of writable space on disk which is your home directory um, so for package source to work you would be basically um, bootstrapping in your home directory um, and uh, it, was, it was a lot of work to actually trying to integrate it into the system. Um, the other problem was, was that um, Perl, which gets pulled into a build quite earlier on in the process, uh, would not build. Um, or it, it would build, but it wouldn't link. And um, the guys have their own package managing system, but the way that they've actually uh, implemented all their changes, it's uh, rather than trying to integrate with what's actually there, um, they've just gone, gone in and started deleting stuff and uh, replacing it. So when you're looking at their uh, changes, you have these quite extensive diffs um, that you need to kind of unpick. Whereas like for us in package source, we don't touch the Perl code base. We just, at build time, we pass a kind of a, spec, uh, a settings file to say, uh, build Perl with these settings and uh, the build goes off and does its thing rather than actually modifying the source code uh, to hard code the settings we want to build with. Um, and so I kind of gave up on this and thought about uh, another platform to um, apply my um, skills at. <laughs>